With all the quarterback movement for the Washington football team, I brought together some of the best to play for the franchise, Joe Theismann, Mark Rippon, and Jason Campbell. They discuss what it means for the franchise and for the players themselves. Hello and welcome into our quarterback roundtable. Why don't we just call this the quarterback room? Um, minus myself, but I am in some good company. Joe Theismann, 12 seasons with Washington, uh, went to the Super Bowl, was the NFL MVP as well. And Mark Rippon, eight seasons with the Burgundy and Gold, two Super Bowl rings, and while well, he was Super Bowl MVP as well. And then Jason Campbell drafted in the first round, five seasons with Washington, 10 in the NFL. I can't be around more co uh, better company if we're going to talk about the quarterback situation here for Washington. Uh, glad to have each of you gentlemen here. Julie, thanks for having us. Thank you, yeah, Julie. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank this you, is Julie. Gonna, appreciate this it. is going to be fun. Um, you know, look, there's there's a lot to get to. The, the, the quarterback carousel continues for this franchise, as it seems to do almost every single year. But look, you have a new coach, Ron Rivera, coming in, and he has a young quarterback trying to get himself developed. So let's kind of just start at the beginning of all this, but we have three quarterbacks to get through throughout this uh, next show here that we're going to be doing. Um, every single one of you, you had to wait in order to start. So none of you started right off the bat as rookies. So you understand what it's like to sit, to wait, to get in, and also what it means to be the best at your craft. But let's just talk about what it takes for a young quarterback. I mean, are we in a microwave society where we want these quarterbacks these days to come in and have an instant impact? Um, but Joe, it doesn't necessarily happen that way. No, it really doesn't, Julie. The quarterback position, I tell people all the time, it's a process. It's a learning process. You have to learn the system. You have to learn the NFL. You have to learn how to prepare yourself. You have to learn all these little things, all the nuances of the game and the position. You know, having a conversation with Tom Brady, what, 20, 20 some odd years, Drew Brees, I talk to them on occasion and they're constantly learning. You know, you never stop learning about that position. And I think one of the really problems that Dwayne had was not having enough work in the off season. And it wasn't his fault. It just, you couldn't do it. You can't learn how to play this position by Zoom. You have to be able to be on the field. You have to be there with your teammates. You have to be in the classroom. You have to be out running plays and seeing things happen and then putting it in your memory bank and say, okay, if this happens, then I do this. You can't do it by video alone. And that held him back a bit. Yeah, I, I, I think that um, one of the things that this league has is they want you to win yesterday. And um, that's unfortunate with, with What's happened from COVID, and Joe kind of set the, the the table there by the consistency that uh, being out there physically throwing the football, uh, mentally looking at film, and and working with your guys each and every day, and having that consistency on a on a daily level is is vital uh, for the success. And even so, to be out there watching the other guys, and and you know I I end up watching a couple of years with um, with uh, Jay and and Doug and I felt to myself, wow, I learned so much just being around them. I learned so much by watching how they became a pro. And I don't think that uh, Dwayne's had that opportunity to learn really what it's like to be a pro. And uh, I think he, there's no doubt in my mind, he's, he's got the potential to be one of the, the greats in the game. It's just uh, unfortunate where he's at now. And, um, you know, I wish him well and, and I hope he continues to at least do the things that he can uh, within his uh, surroundings and, and, and be the guy that he wants to be. Jason, 11 starts is what he had. Four with uh, this coaching regime. He also had two head coaches last season. Then you go to Urban Meyer the one year he was in college. You had seven different head coaches in your 10 years. Um, how much is that for a young quarterback trying to just find his way and learn, as, as Mark was saying, learning how to be a pro, but at the same time learning yet another offense? How much does that really kind of go into how quickly he um, adjusts to the NFL? Yeah, Julie, I agree a lot with what, with both what Joe and Mark just said. When you think about, you know, Dwayne's progress, like for me, no one's gone through, like you said, many changes. And, you know, if anyone can attest to it, it's myself. And like I said, I went through so many different coordinators. And when you don't have OTAs and mini camps and training camp and preseason, you learn so much during that time. OTAs is where you implement a lot of your offense in. You're going against your defense. You're practicing certain situations and certain downs. And then it gets a preseason where you're in live games and that's when you're able to make make your mistakes and 
and see and find that rhythm. And for him, he's working with a first year offensive coordinator. I know Scott Turner is, you know, it's Norv's son, but that was Norv that was calling those plays all those years. That was him designing them. I mean, he was grooming Scott to be an offense coordinator. So Scott didn't get the opportunity to have this whole offense this offseason for OTAs and mini camps and training camps. So he's trying to learn the players and then they're trying to develop some type of chemistry together where you can kind of feel what the coordinator is going to call on the next down or next series, but they don't have that. Everything they're doing, they're trying to learn on the fly and get up and for these first four games, I heard Coach Rivera say, he said, we're going to treat this like a preseason. Yes, you treat it like a preseason, but at the same time, you know, I've seen Allen get in there and I've seen Alex get in there yesterday and it showed me that the struggles are a lot more than just the quarterback position. And I've been saying this since day one. I look at the offensive line, they cannot build a wall in front of whatever quarterback is out there. Like everything they do has to be a three-step drop. The ball has to come out of half a second. They're not able to throw anything past 15, 20 yards down the field because they don't have time to do it. And so the off the game is won from being built from the inside out. Everyone wants these quarterbacks sometimes to be, like you said, microwave. You just pop and all of a sudden, boom, you arrive. It just doesn't happen that way. And, uh, you know, for Dwayne, he went through a lot last year and then this year, supposed to have been his building year. And to be moved so quickly, you know, that can do a lot to his confidence. But I always say this, I would say this to Dwayne, it's all about how you respond and accept this challenge. Like, let this light a fire under you. If it's in your preparation of something that you're doing at home, make sure you do above and beyond. So when that opportunity come back to itself, because it will come back around, whether it's in Washington or whether it's somewhere else, your career is not over, but you need to be prepared to be, to be ready when it, when it does. Joe, let me follow up with you on this one because you were playing. Joe Gibbs comes in as the head coach, and you weren't necessarily his guy. So Ron Rivera gets Dwayne Haskins. They're not married to each other. I mean, Ron has the opportunity to do whatever he wants with this position. What was it like for you, though, in order to tell um, Gibbs, hey, like, I am your guy. You need to play me. Well, it's, I, you know, again, Julie, I had the benefit of being out on the field and being able to show him my skill set. Dwayne's really didn't have that. I mean, it was right into the fire for him. I mean, we were 0-5. I mean, I went through that period when he came in, and you were right, Julie, I wasn't his. Um, I drove to his house after we lost to the San Francisco 49ers. I sat down with him. It, it, you know, I, I, I talk about it in the book. It's, you know, how important is the job to you? What are you going to do to try and keep your job or get your job, or in Dwayne's case, get your job back? All right, so let's go back to you, Jason. The pressure of being a first-round draft pick and all that goes with it. We've heard head coach Ron Rivera say, I don't really care. And a lot of coaches over the times, they don't really care where you're drafted. They just want to see what you put on the field. But, yeah, when you're drafted in the first round, there's a large investment into you developing as that guy, expected to be that guy. Um, and it doesn't really matter that you're young at all. Um, and then, yeah, with Scott Turner coming in here, too, I mean, this team, the offense is really young, too. I mean, how do you expect an offense to grow when you don't have where, – where's the veteran leadership on this offense across the board? Jason, and then I'll let Mark follow up. Yeah, uh, Julie and Joe, to answer your question is, when you're the, when you're the number one pick and you're coming in, there is a lot of pressure because you want to hold up to that, to, that, to that number one pick. And then on top of that, when you first walk into that locker room, everyone's looking at you. And for me, it was a little bit different situation because Patrick Ramsey was just drafted in the first round, I think the last pick in the first round, maybe two, three years before me. And then Mark Burnell was there. So I was fortunate enough to have a veteran in Mark that I could lean on for advice and to help me through the situation. But at the same time, I had to prepare my mind to compete against both of those guys that wanted to get on the field. And at the same time, you're trying to carry this torch. And, and playing in Washington, D.C. is so much tradition. There's so much history behind the team that you know, they haven't had consistency going to the playoffs. And then you're always prepping your mind for that. And then me coming from Auburn, I was always used to winning. And when you come to it, when you come to the NFL, you can be beat on any given Sunday. And sometimes you can beat yourself up too much where sometimes you make it harder on yourself to come back that next week because you, you, you set the ceiling so high for yourself. And then when I think about Dwayne, Dwayne is from Maryland. He is from that area. So he's dealing with a little bit more added pressure than anyone else that has ever come through those doors as a quarterback because now you got friends, you got family, you got everyone's watching you and you're in your hometown. So every little thing you do, you know, it matters. And then if you're not performing well, if you have a bad game like we've all had before, it gets magnified by two because now your friends and family is involved. So now you feel that pressure like, okay, I got to go out there and do this. I got to try to save this franchise. I, no, you, you're only one piece. 
like you look at all the great quarterbacks around the league, the one thing they all have, they've all, always been with their head coach for a long time or they've been with their offensive coordinator for a long time. Yeah, I think what well, 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 obviously they didn't have the uh, the pressures that uh, Jason had coming in as a first round pick, and but I did have um, a high standard. Uh, Joe and Doug and all that team in the '80s and and uh, '80s to the mid '80s to to the time when I played, there was a high standard. Making it into the playoffs and not going deep into the playoffs was uh, unacceptable. You know, winning the Lombardi Trophy and hoisting the Lombardi Trophy was what you had to do. And so there was there was a pressure, even though I wasn't a high round draft pick. There was a pressures of the standards that were already set in Washington D.C. And um, fortunate for me, uh, you know, we had I think Jason and, and and Joe both touched on it. We had consistency at the coaching level, consistency uh, the quarterback coach, and often even though our quarterback coaches changed, our offensive coordinator was Joe Gibbs, and he was a catalyst for everything that we did. So the consistency was always there. We knew each and every week we were going to be prepared as a football team to go out and execute. And I think that's one of the imp- imperative for a young quarterback, quarterback like myself, to watch these guys. Jay Schrader wasn't, but uh, second or third year in the league, and he was successful. Doug came in there. He's out of the USFL. He became successful. I played two or three years kind of, uh, you know, off and on. And, and I just knew that, you know, the one thing that was important and imperative is the pressures and the high standards that were already there in place. But it was e- easier knowing I had a coach, coaching staff, and obviously the one the one big factor is you're, you're only as good as the guys up front. And when you got the hogs in front of you, you're going to be pretty successful no matter what. And, and a great core of athletes and, and a commitment to, to excellence at that, at that period in, in the uh, Washington football team era. Did I say that right? Yes, you did. In the NFL, things happen so fast. Changes happen so fast. And, you know, for Allen, what helps him is being in that system last year under Scott because I played in that system. Like Joe said, we've all played in that system. 